was through Zambia. Mr. Mlenga has disclosed that President Hichlema has since appointed Mr. Uh, Dingan, Dingani Banda as new ZRA Commissioner General uh, pursuant to Section 19, Clause 1 of the Zambia Revenue Authority Act, Chapter 321 of the Laws of Zambia. She adds that President Hichlema has thanked Mr. Chanda for the service he rendered the country and has wished him God's blessings in future endeavors. That's one of the stories that uh, you might be yearning to hear of what is happening at uh, our collection base of Zambia's resources. Let's get into it. Mr. Tonga. welcome to this uh, program. And, Thank you. Uh, allow me to officially congratulate you. Thank for, you. Of course, uh, your victory as UPND. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. We were discussing, you and I, that um, this victory really, you know, it, it has come more like um, uh, a, a huge responsibility mm -hmm. to your side as UPND yes. members because the challenges that you've been, uh, uh, you have so far are huge, mm -hmm. are immense. Yes. How does it feel now that you are in power? Well, um, I think as UPND men, members, it's uh, bittersweet. Uh, there's an element of euphoria, without a doubt, that you're in power. But at the same time, you also look at uh, where you're coming from. Uh, the people that have passed away as a result of supporting UPND, uh, the people that have lost jobs as a result of supporting UPND. Um, we, I think, as members, lost more. Uh, so there's an element uh, where, you, you are, yes, you're happy, but you also have to realize that quite a lot has been lost. Um, the responsibilities are something that I think we've prepared for. It is not something, you, you can't be running for office and not know that this is what it takes to run a government. Without a doubt, I think our senior leaders in government are without a doubt more than prepared. To run this to run this country, All right? Yeah. How was your experience while well, in the opposition, really? Where you spent about uh, over twenty years in the opposition? Oh, it was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> what is brutal about it? Uh, first and foremost, you know, we were not given an opportunity to freely express ourselves uh, in terms of just being able to articulate issues. Uh, if 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 a member of UPND wanted to. Uh, have a protest, you know, uh, last time I think uh, uh, they sent trucks as if it's a military raid or something like that, uh, Pilato, you know, Pilato experienced a lot of that. So being in the opposition in this country, and, and, and I think this is one of the things that we are trying to change. We are trying, as a new government, I think we are trying to show that uh, you already have rights regardless of your political opinion. We felt as if certain people were allowed to do certain things and those who were in UPND were not allowed to do some of those things. Otherwise, you know, we could have easily debated members of PF, we could have articulated our vision freely, but we were not given those opportunities. And that's one of the major things that uh, I think uh, the UPND government is trying to change. If you are in the opposition, you should be free to discuss politics. You should be free to, you should be, free to be against what the president is doing mm -hmm. without you thinking that you're going to lose your job. Right. Yeah. That's interesting because uh, it appears that most of uh, you know, our politicians, uh, more especially when you are in government, mm -hmm. It's rare that people will be willing to be criticized. Mm -hmm. They do not want to hear things that uh, may uh, in, injure or, or on, on their, you know, developmental or to hear anything negative on their side. Well, if you you're if your developmental agenda is easily injured by criticism, then yeah. there's something wrong with it. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if I'm going to present an agenda to Zambians, it has to be bulletproof, meaning that I need to present it and allow each and every individual to criticize it. Once they criticize it, we're going to find areas of improvement, patch it together, and present a proper agenda for the Zambian people. Mm -hmm. I don't think because UPND is in power, suddenly people shouldn't speak. No, without, without due respect, go ahead, mm -hmm. speak, criticize, you see? When people are in government, 
they are so focused on getting things done that sometimes they are going to miss certain things. So it's up to the Zambian people who are outside to actually say, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and feel that if today they said this is wrong, tomorrow they won't find somebody at their office mm. to say, hey, you are fired. No, 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 I don't think way before UPN became in government, those are not the values that we subscribe to. I want to be criticized. If I'm wrong, people should tell me I'm wrong. And I'm willing, I'm more than willing to fix anything that is wrong. Right. What, what is the importance, uh, Mr. Mtonga, uh, of uh, criticism? You know, I emphasize once more because, uh, like I told you, like I did mention, that sometimes our leaders, more especially those, or when they're in power, they don't want to accommodate criticism. And then for the sake of a viewer out there, what is the importance or why a criticism or why is it important for one to be criticized in a democratic country like ours? Um, back in the day in the 1940s, um, when Hitler was uh, building his Nazi campaign, a few people criticized what they were doing to the Jews. Mm -hmm. And throughout that entire process, six million Jews were killed. But there were people who dissented, Germans who said this is wrong. My brother, that's the power of criticism. Simply, the idea that the majority of people are going in one direction doesn't make them right, you see. The entire German nation was supporting the Nazi party, but a few dissented. The criticism gives us an opportunity to critically think. So I even in this situation where there is euphoria, all UPND members are happy, all of us are tunnel vision where we are saying, in the honeymoon. exactly, we are in the honeymoon yeah. phase, we, everything that we are doing, we think it's right. Mm. That's not the case. We depend on those people who are saying, no, 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 yeah. that's not correct. Because you don't want, because remember, if you do not criticize the country, you, you, I mean, if you don't criticize the government, you will allow this government to go into a path that you will later regret. I would rather be known that I spoke against what's going on, even during PF. We spoke against what, what, what was going on because I didn't want people to come and say, well, you guys never spoke up. Mm. Criticism is essential to the democratic values of our society as well as the development of our society. Mm. So nobody should feel that suddenly everything that UPND does is right. No, no, no. And I don't think the president or our senior leaders have presented themselves in such a way. Mm. Yeah. For example, in the past we have seen uh, where uh, those critical voices, they are perceived to be, you know, enemies of uh, development mm -hmm. or enemies of uh, progress. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, between two political parties or two different political parties, but even at internal level, you find that maybe this uh, person, because uh, he's got a, a different voice, he or she will be haunted out of the party. Mm -hmm. For example, we had a lot of people like uh, Honorable Chimba Kambwe at a time when he was uh, kicked out of the Patriotic Front. You know, he came here and he said, I was, you know, chased from the party because I criticized the issues to deal with corruption. We've mm -hmm. got Honorable Harry Kalaba as well, who is speaking the same message to say for me, I, I'm, I'm being hated by the Patriotic Front because I spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. I criticized the wrongs. And I'll bring it to your my second question here. You have continued in your case, you know, mingling or engaging with uh, some former uh, PF leaders mm -hmm. or members, mm -hmm. even despite now you're in, in, in the ruling party. Mm -hmm. How easy is it? My brother, a PF member is, somebody can be a PF member, but he'll still be my uncle married to somebody that I know. Somebody can be a member of PF and is a guy that I went to boarding school with, you see. You being PF doesn't change the fact that you're a Zambian yeah, a Zambian citizen. And I think we shouldn't lose that. We shouldn't allow politics to blind us that we forget that we are dealing with individuals. We are dealing with genuine Zambians. And there's no way I can say that we are part of a political party that's willing to build Zambia for all mm. and create enemies unnecessarily simply because they are members of PF. Yeah. I feel strongly that with the UPND government, there's a desire for bipartisan type of leadership where there's no way 
a group of people can disagree on everything. Mm -hmm. There's no way. There should be certain things that we can work together on for the, for the development of the country. You see, um, there's uh, uh, freedom, free, uh, access to Freedom Information Act. That's something that's good for everybody. The ability for you guys as journalists to go and seek information about what's going on in the government. Mm. You see, so I wouldn't expect somebody to uh, object to that. Or, or issues of uh, proper health care, issues of uh, our attempt to realize um, access to education. Why should we disagree on something that is as clear as a desire for more people to go to school? Mm -hmm. So I don't see those who have a different political opinion than I do as enemies, and I can certainly discuss if they are willing to have me. And it's also an opportunity to convince them to join UPND. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, at individual level, I know that uh, you did sacrifice a lot, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of resources and uh, your time as well. Yes. Into the UPND while in the opposition. Yes. Finally, you are in the ruling party. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that, uh, I will now ask you a direct question. What is it that um, you were investing for? Th this atmosphere. Yeah. Right. I wanted this atmosphere. I wanted an environment where you and I can discuss. Right now, if you want to start criticizing the president, we can discuss that. If you feel that the president has done something wrong, we can say that. I, I invested my time because I believed in the core values of the UPND party. And this is one thing I think we need to be very much aware of, is the fact that UPND is a value-based political party. Mm. It is not just so much about regalia, wearing colors. It's about values, respecting each other, uh, accountability and transparency, freedom of uh, press, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly. These are values that each and every UPND member holds themselves to. Mm. So I wanted to see that system in place. Mm. Because if we are going to say we want to develop this country, we need to practice democratic values. Because as the president has always said that the democratic dividends mm. are going to be shared by all of us as Zambians. Mm. So my investment in politics was for this atmosphere mm. so that Zambians can be at peace. Mm. Yeah. There will be, or oh, there are some people out there and I'm glad you've uh, given uh, a go ahead to the people of Zambia. Uh, including myself, yes. that, uh, if we want, we can uh, freely criticize the president. Yes. Very uh, interesting, actually. And uh, there are a lot of critics out there from the people of Zambia that feel that maybe uh, the UPND, for example, you, you, you are not ready to govern. Mm -hmm. You know, and in my asking, I'll ask you, what different are you going to be, or what legacy are you going to leave in the next five years from now? or if God again gives another chance in the next 10 years? Well, without a doubt, we, we, we are hoping the Zambian people can, ele can elect us again in 2026, so okay. we will continue campaigning. Okay. Uh, in terms of legacy, I, I strongly feel it's a legacy of um, transparency, right. accountability, freedom of uh, press, especially freedom of press. You have no idea how critical a free press is to, dem to the democratic values of a country because it would it can take just one newspaper right. to build a case that reaches a level of global humanitarian mm. uh, uh, accessibility so we are committed without any shred of doubt mm. that we will and remember we, we are not allowing you these are freedoms zambians have always had we are simply respecting the law. Mm. So this is not a gift to the Zambian people. They've always had it. We're simply telling them that we respect the law and we will protect those freedoms. Mm. And that's the legacy of UPND, that sense of um, intelligent mm. governance. Uh, the president has talked about data-driven governance. We're not going to be emotional right. in running the government. I don't think our senior leaders have shown have been shown to be emotional in, in making decisions. Mm. The data has to add to what we are trying to do. If the numbers say A, we're going to do that. 
you see. So if you had to think of UPND over the next five years or ten years, mm. you want to think of a government that brought sanity right. to governance. Right. Yeah. I hope we can be generous enough, uh, Mr. Mtonga. I know that uh, critics are supposed to come uh, from either your opponents, you know, as well as uh, independent minds. Yes. All right. But I will uh, force you possibly to get into your mind with regards to how you you assess President H. H. from the time he's been in office mm -hmm. uh, to date. One month and, and uh, some, 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 some weeks mm -hmm. or 40 days plus. All right. Let's talk about President H.H. How do you assess him in terms of uh, the fight against corruption? Let's begin from there. Well, H.H., she's, I think what Boma Lusambo said, what, she's a force to let go with. <laughs> you know, one thing about President Haka Inde Chilema is this. Yeah. He's waited for this opportunity for way too long not to know what he wants to do. <coughs> I am very confident without any shred of doubt mm. that he knows what's, what he's doing and he's going to create that vision. Mm. But at the same time, you have to understand, government is not just the president. Like, government is literally not just state house. They are so many people in government. Mm. So those individuals equally have to lead the president is not looking for individuals who are, who are just going to wait on uh, what did the president say and then they react. No. The president is looking for individual leadership, leaders. Where if you are given ZRA, you need to lead that institution. If you are given the Ministry of Finance, you need to lead that institution. The president can't be doing everything. Uh, in terms of the assessment so far, I yeah. think it's a little bit too soon. Mm. to create any tangible assessment. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's an appointing process going on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an audit uh, process going on. Because when you, you have information about government while you're in the opposition, mm -hmm. and then when you enter, you now have the legal right mm -hmm. to seek certain information. And from there, you need to assess whether, because I can, in the opposition, I can think you're the best for a specific position, right? But when I audit that position while I'm in government, I realize that the problems are not uniquely tailored to your talents. So I need to find somebody else who can actually do well in that position. Mm. So our leaders, I think, are going in that process. They want the best because you have to realize something. We are in a unique position where one simple mistake will dilute everything that we could have ever done. Mm. They will say, I think uh, on social media, uh, they are saying, Nipano Tuli. Mm. That's how on the edge we are. Mm. One simple mistake. People will say, see that? We told you not to elect them. So we can't afford any mistake. We would rather take time to actually realize the right mm. leaders, the right skills in solving some of the problems that we currently have. There are your colleagues, uh, uh, more especially those from the, uh, the opposition, that are accusing you already uh, with the President HH that uh, it appears again you've been ambushed. You, you were more prepared to petition the presidential uh, results or outcomes than uh, you were prepared or you should have been prepared to govern this country. They've hmm. given or cited examples to say that you have even brought uh, people that should have been home, uh, for example, or in their farms, you know, <laughs> in the name of uh, recycled politicians. Mm -hmm. For example, they have cited Honorable uh, Milupi, uh, others have uh, cited uh, Felix Simtati, mm -hmm. all those individuals. It doesn't mean that maybe the UPND didn't have uh, the caliber or maybe the quality of people that could have taken, uh, taken up those spaces without looking at the people that might have served in the previous uh, governments. Um, the president, I think, as well as UPND, are in a unique situation where each and every appointment is being scrutinized. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of interests that have to be satisfied, uh, and then there, there, there's also a consideration of experience. Yeah. Uh, you see, and this is what uh, we want to push, the idea of a technocrat. Mm. There are certain individuals, regardless of what government they served in, still have the skills 
to run their institutions. I don't see why a change in government should obligate a technocrat to be removed from a position they are genuinely qualified for and they can do. I think we are in this culture where we feel that uh, working in government is a reward for political loyalty. Mm. I don't think that's the case. Mm. Working, a, working in government, especially a government like UPND, is about skill. Can you do the job? Mm. And I think that's what is driving the president more than um, political appointment, so to mm. speak. Working in the UPN government is not about a reward system for you supporting UPND or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it, it, running a government is a serious business. Just because you stood with a president at a rally doesn't make you qualified to be ZRA commissioner. Mm -hmm. And we have to be honest about that. Mm. Yeah. And I, I want to uh, actually, I think, ride on your, uh, your point because this is what your critics are saying. Say so that uh, UPND, when you were in the opposition, you you seemed to you know to, to, to have had that the think tanks, the brainers, mm -hmm. you know, who could have taken up these spaces. For example, you look very energetic and very eloquent. You know, you should have maybe injected new uh, new people in government to take up certain positions and like recycling. You remember the critics that you offered uh, to the uh, then ruling party, the mm -hmm. PF, that uh, the government is being run by the former leaders in the mm -hmm. MMD. Yes. But it's like you are, you are using the same script which the PF used as well. You know, and, and I'll quote one, uh, some words from uh, Professor Mumba who said uh, Zambia and other countries are not short of leaders. Zambia is definitely not short of leaders. Yeah. Uh, however, there are certain political realities that we have to face. Mm. Um, UPND entered into an uh, alliance yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. that alliance helped UPND get to a certain stage. So th there's an element of politics. I'm not going to say that UPND is a pure government that's just going to bring in new people. No. There are certain positions, like, for example, Musako Twani. Yeah. Um, um, he served in uh, MMD before he went to UPND, mm -hmm. and we brought him back as finance minister. So in, there are certain individuals, and, and I have to go back to this same idea where <coughs> even during PF, I can genuinely tell you that there are certain individuals that I was proud of as leaders. Mm. Uh, we have uh, the Luapula Provincial Minister. Mr. I think, ah, I mean, mm. the man is a genuine salesman. He has done a lot to put Luapula on the map. A lot of people even used to think Samfia is a swamp. Yeah. Now you can actually think of Samfia as a honeymoon destination. So. Being a member of a political party doesn't take away your skills. And I think we need to get away from this idea that because you are this, therefore you can never be this. You know, there are people who are career technocrats, mm. and we have to respect their skills. But yes, uh, I too had a criticism uh, of uh, PF in recycling politicians. And obviously, as we go on into the future, we should be able to see more newer minds, newer leaders. Um, at a, and and, and the, other, the, other, the other issue also is that some of you guys who are actually good are not interested in politics. <laughs> you see? You prefer to be in the private right. sector. Yeah. You see? Because we've created an environment where politics are about character assassination. Mm -hmm. If I want to be in politics, I don't need you to be talking about my family. Yeah. I don't need to feel my family is not safe simply because I'm in politics. Mm -hmm. So the UPND government has to create that environment. So if we want new leaders, we need to create an environment where they can come in and participate in politics and understand that their participation in politics will not close certain doors, whether it's business, uh, uh, political relationships. They avoid politics because they feel that any time they say, I'm you, 